I'm Sam Klemek. I would describe my style as playful, sculptural, and bold. Hello, my name is Drew Scott, and I would describe my style as attainable, DIY, and eclectic. What did you think when you found out you'd be transforming a Target dresser? Mostly just excited. The way that I started getting into furniture was actually redoing stuff I found on the side of the road. So it kind of felt like going back to my roots a little bit. And I love taking things apart to see how they're made. I've actually seen this dresser before and I was gonna use it in a project in the past, but I never did. So I cannot wait to bring it to life today. I really wanted to give this piece a wood look because it's just a white melamine dresser to start. Even though the dresser is made out of MDF and plywood and it has this white laminate on it, I really want the end result to still look as though it's like a piece of fine woodwork. So when it came to thinking about this design, I wanted to mix vintage with modern and kind of get this vintage revival look. And I'm doing the vintage element of that through a burl wood application, but I'm doing it in like a checkerboard fashion. So it kind of adds a little bit of a trendy element. And then the modern side of it, we're adding this really great arched base to the bottom. So I think marrying those two will create a really great juxtaposition. So I did a melty sort of design for the drawer faces. I wanted to kind of create some movement. I chose red oak for the type of plywood because the grain line also kind of has this really beautiful figuring. And then I knew I also wanted to create a pull handle just to give it like one added layer of texture to the piece. For this project today, we're actually using extremely minimal supplies, just some plywood, which I already had cut down at the hardware store, some contact paper I ordered online, and then just some brackets and some screws. And that's really all we're gonna need. I knew I was gonna do mostly plywood, so I knew the place to go to was Anderson Plywood. I went with my cut list. So I was actually able to have the guys help me with some of the bigger cuts, which I knew would be a huge time saver for me. So the first step in our process is going to be to create the arched base. And I'm going to be doing that just by using a pencil and like a paint stick and use that as a makeshift compass. And then we can just use this to trace our arch. I make my templates out of MDF because it is cheap. It's also a perfectly flat surface. I'll take it to the bandsaw. I'll use a really small blade that makes it really easy to cut curves. We also have a round sander and really just shape the piece. After I finish with my template, I'm gonna cut out my new drawer faces. This is a handheld router and I just put my top following bit in. So I'm gonna take this and move around the template and trim off the excesses, and then it allows me to perfectly replicate the shape that's on top. Here's our base. So we have our arches cut and the side pieces cut, and I'm gonna use these L brackets to attach everything together with some wood screws. I personally love working with L brackets because it gives you a clean finish on the outside. So you can make sure it has that structure and stability on the inside of your piece and it's hidden, but on the outside you have like smooth, clean wood. So I decided to switch out the dresser feet, mostly because once I landed on my droopy design, I realized that the bottom droop would be too close to the ground and I decided to laminate two pieces together to also make them a bit thicker, just to add some more structure. My tabletop is already cut to the size that I want. I'm just gonna round off the edges to give it a smooth feeling. Next up is my favorite part, which is the contact paper. Contact paper is essentially printed vinyl that's also removable. So a lot of people use this in rental-friendly upgrades. You can redo your countertops with this. You can use it on DIY projects. I'm actually gonna be cutting my Burlwood contact paper into four inch by four inch squares, sharpening all of the edges so that we don't have a white core and it kind of defines our checkerboard and then applying them to the entire dresser and arched base. For the side of the dresser, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. I I'm planning on sanding the white melanine material off and applying a red oak veneer. You actually just peel it off and stick it on. I've never used it before and I'm super excited. Honestly, it's so easy. So what I do is I just find the exact center point of that piece, place my first square and then work out. That way when you get to the ends, it could be even on both sides. When I apply these, I actually kind of maneuver them to see which grain looks most different from the one previous. So I'll probably do this one right here. 
So I'm gonna be edge banding a lot of the dresser, creating this faux effect that this piece is made out of real wood. I'm definitely getting vintage vibes from this burl wood. It has almost this like antique toning to it. And now we have that nice wood finish on the edge. I decided I wanted to make handles for the dresser. So I have my squared off piece of wood. I have my pre-jilled holes, which will make it super easy to attach the dowels and become a handle. A lathe is made for wood turning and basically turning is taking something that's square and making it round. So when I put the wood on the lathe, I am going to start by just getting it to be a perfectly round piece. As you turn real hard wood, you see this beautiful figuring and grain line that sort of transforms as you turn it on the lathe, and I wanted to make sure to capture that for the piece. The dresser is fully wrapped and it looks amazing. Now I didn't add the legs that it came with because we're gonna be attaching it to the base that we constructed. And we first need to bring this outside to give it a coat of our gloss finish. A lot of vintage burlwood pieces actually have an extremely glossy finish and I want to achieve that same look as well. So I'm gonna be using a glossy top coat. I'm gonna use a finish called Rubio Monocoat. A lot of times with stains, you have to put the stain and then you have to seal it with something. With Rubio, you don't have to do that. It's kind of an all-in-one. Because we have this melty design effect, I think I'm gonna play with three different colors of stain. I kind of wanna create an ombre effect. So I'm gonna do the tops and the sides as the lightest color in our ombre. I think it'll just bring some unity to the whole piece and then you'll just focus on the drawers. The gloss coat's dry and we're going to put the base that we constructed onto the dresser. So this material right here is called Luan, and as you can see, it's nice and flexible, and we are going to be pushing it into this arch here to give it a finished look. Oh no, she wants to snap. <laughs> Oopsies. I didn't mean for that to happen. <laughs> okay, the drawers are the moment of truth. When I first saw the dresser as it was, I just wanted to switch it out because I felt like the dresser just like deserved something a little bit nicer. Red oak bottom that we switched out. Making a weird sound, but it's working. Pull wrap came to the rescue. It's flexible and it's gonna fit our arch perfectly. Going in with some wood stain to just stain the underside and make it match more of the base. There we go. I love that the grain line of the wood sort of takes on this wavy effect. Bada bing, bada boom, we got a drawer. So I wasn't too sure if I was gonna add hardware to start, but then I found this rectangular hardware, which I feel like just enhances our checkerboard pattern, and I actually really like it a lot. Yay! Stop! Hi Sam, how are you doing? Hi Drew, I'm good, how are you? I'm so excited to see your project. <gasps> oh my oh, God, what? stop. How did you do that? How did you do that? We kind of almost like have like a similar-ish arch detail. Yours looks like it costs a lot. Like I would pay like thousands of dollars for that. Yeah, yours too. And you did like a burl veneer on yours? It's contact paper. The fabrication of this whole piece was like $80. No, this is like in a catalog, like ready for sale. What's the structure 
below the drawers. It's actually just like a wood box that I made, like three quarter inch plywood that I cut the arch out of. It was originally supposed to be like a flexible wood on the underside, but it snapped. So I had to improvise quickly and I had extra pull wrap. So I just wrapped the underside with the pull wrap. I think the extra texture is really cool. What about your pulls? Did you probably turned those, didn't you? I did. Yeah. I wanted to do like another sort of wavy wobbly element to go with like the grain line and the droopiness of the drawers. I buy those. I can make handles and then you can buy them for your project. (laughs) Your new business. And did you stain them different? So I wanted to do sort of like an ombre and then the like middle tone turned out to be sort of lighter than the top, but it's, you know, like a pop color bottom drawer situation. Like, how did you do that to the drawers? So I completely took the faces off and then made them out of red oak plywood. And then I did like edge banding on the side. So it looks like it's wood and you can stain it. I think we both did a really good job. I actually love both of our dressers. I love that one's tall and one's short. Like there's different purposes for both. It's not like one could pick one or the other. You need both. You do need right? both. You need both. Yeah. Drew, it was so nice meeting you and I loved seeing your piece. We have to do something in the future. Yeah, we have, I want to get like drinks or something. And then we'll build furniture right after. Yeah. We'll wait <laughs> <for it. laughs>